The standard form of a linear optimization problem assumes that all our constraints are ceilings and we're looking for a maximum. But what if they're not? Then we need to convert the system into the standard form. The objective function L can be easily converted if you remember that closest to the floor is farthest from the ceiling. So if we want to minimize some objective function, we can introduce a new function which is the negative of our original function, and then we can apply the simplex algorithm to maximize our new function. So if we want to minimize some objective function subject to the constraints and the positivity requirements, we'll introduce our slack variables. Now, minimizing L is the same as maximizing the negative of L, and so we can rewrite our objective function as an equation in standard form, which gives us our initial tableau. Since x has the greatest negative coefficient in the L star row, we'll find the row with the least non-negative quotient of the constant and coefficient of the entering variable. This is in the second row, so we'll pivot on that entry. Now, since y has the greatest negative coefficient in the L star row, we'll find the row with the least non-negative quotient. This will be row 1, so we'll pivot using this row and the y column entry. And since all coefficients in the L star row are non-negative, there could be no further improvement in L star. So the greatest value of L star will be... And since L star is negative L, this means that the least value of L is... What if we have lower bounds instead of upper bounds? The obvious solution is to turn floors into ceilings by changing the signs. So our greater than or equal to inequality becomes a less than or equal to inequality. Will this work? Well, let's find out. Let's try to find the greatest value of an objective function subject to some linear constraints. So we'll rewrite our system so that all inequalities are ceilings. The first two inequalities are already less than or equal to. Rewriting our third inequality by multiplying through by negative 1 gives us. With slack variables and including the objective function, we get. Which produces our initial tableau. Setting our free variables equal to 0 gives us. But remember, the CIs have to be non-negative in order for XY to be in the feasible region. This is not a basic feasible solution. What this means is we can't let C3 be a basic variable since it could be negative. But if C3 is going to be a free variable, then the first pivot variable will have to be something else in its row. Now, note that however we pivot, the other entries in the row won't change. So as long as we pivot on a variable with a negative coefficient, we'll get a non-negative solution if the other variables are non-negative. So we can pivot on any variable with a negative coefficient in any row with negative constant. Now, to avoid having to make choices, we'll use the first-first decision. So in the first row with a negative constant, we'll pivot on the first negative coefficient. So our first pivot will be the x entry of the third row. So our entering variable is x, which is now basic, and our exiting variable is c3, which is now free. And if we pivot, we get... Now our free variables are y and c3, but again, if we let our free variables be 0, then c2 is negative 1, which is not a feasible solution. 
So in the first row with the negative constant, the first negative coefficient is y. So we'll pivot on y in row 2. And this will make y basic and c2 free, and so we row reduce to get Now our free variables are c2 and c3, and if we set them equal to 0, we get, which is a feasible solution. And it's important to keep in mind that this will be our starting point. We have to begin at a basic feasible solution. So now, since the greatest negative coefficient in the L row is c3, we'll make c3 a basic variable. Since the only non-negative quotient of a constant and a coefficient of c3 comes from the first row, we'll pivot on c3 using the first row. This makes c3 basic and c1 free. And so we get... Since c2 has the largest and only negative coefficient in the L row, we'll pivot on c2. And since our first row gives us the least non-negative quotient of the constant of the c2 coefficient, We'll use the first row and pivot on C2. And note that this makes C2 basic and returns C3 to being a free variable. Now, no coefficient in the L row is negative, so no further improvement in L is possible. So setting our free variables equal to 0 gives us And we don't really care about C1, C2, and C3 anymore. This is going to be our maximum value subject to our constraints.